my one lung isn't taken in the air properly. So it's all the after effects. I've got a high heart rate. Even when I was on a ventilator, my heart stopped twice. So vaccinate, just have it done. And that's what they're preparing for back at the GP surgery, both COVID and seasonal jabs. They have a well-rehearsed vaccination programme and are confident that with everyone's cooperation, the NHS will be able to do its job, as long as we all help by doing ours. John Maguire, BBC News, Bristol. Lots to talk about mm, yeah. and lots of information to digest from yesterday's Downing Street press conference where the government was setting out, as you know, its winter plan to deal with coronavirus and to protect the NHS. You know who we need? We need two I people. I do. Who, oh, we've uh, got them. The yes, we have, who've uh, been able to steer us through so much over the last few months. Dr Chris Smith and Professor Linda Bolt are here to answer some of your questions that have been coming in. Uh, thank you to the pair of you for being with us on yet another morning. Um, it feels like a big one with this winter plan being announced. Um, Professor, let's come to you first of all. Where do you stand on this winter plan, part A of it anyway, and, and when do we know, do you think, if it's going to be enough? Yeah, morning, Dan. Morning, Louise. I think um, it's good to hear a, a UK-level plan, particularly for England, where it recognises, you know, the progress that we've made, we, we've made. And I think plan A is basically business as usual, really continuing to invest in the vaccine programme, including the boosters and the extension to 12 to 15-year-olds, as you've heard. But in terms of switching to plan B, which isn't a dramatic plan, it's some relatively modest additions to the response. I think the threshold really is around hospital admissions. As you were just hearing in the clip there, if they get to a very high level, in Scotland we've already got over 1,000 people in hospital. We had just over 1,500 in the April peak. So I think that will be the trigger. But as Sir Patrick Valance was saying yesterday, some in the public health community would say, well, we should be requiring face coverings already. We should be uh, advising to work from home where you can already as a precautionary principle. Um, so there's a bit of a debate, but I think hospital capacity will be the key shift if you need to take that plan B step. Um, there are lots of questions um, coming in to us. I mean, I'm just mm. going to go through some of them. This is from Doreen, um, who said, who wants to answer this first of all. I'm 72. I've had both vaccine doses. Will be offered a booster jab soon. So I'm considered to be fully jabbed. So the question is, am I considered to be fully jabbed now or will that only apply two weeks after the booster vaccine? Who would like to answer? <laughs> well, well I can, I, I've one. been speaking, so I'll pass over to Chris. <laughs> Well, the, the answer is you're fully jabbed once you've had two doses of the vaccine and a couple of weeks has elapsed because it takes time for the vaccine to have an effect. It takes time for your immune system to respond. So Doreen should regard herself as fully jabbed now. But what we're waiting on is the, is the hard data on who needs a booster, how long that booster is effective for, because that sets the tone for when we should actually start deploying these boosters. Because what we don't want to do is leap too soon and give too many people boosters and, and then protect people for less long than the winter surge is going to last for us. OK, that's good to hear. Um, uh, Professor, here's a question from Sam. Uh, the vaccine does not stop you getting or spreading coronavirus, says Sam. Uh, so how does vaccinating children between the age of 12 to 15 stop them bringing COVID-19 back home? Really good question from Sam, particularly as when the news came on the 12 to 15 year olds, I think there was a bit of confusion. We have been saying, including on your programme repeatedly, vaccines don't completely prevent transmission. That's been an important message to send so people realise they can still pick it up and pass it on even if they're double vaxxed. But it does reduce the chances of transmission. And let me just briefly highlight two studies. The hosted study of thousands of healthcare workers in England uh, showed that they were 40 to 60 percent less likely to pass on the virus uh, to somebody in their household if they'd been vaccinated. And another study in Scotland, Public Health Scotland, again, healthcare workers, just one dose, 30 percent less likely to pass, pass it on. So the vaccines do have a role in reducing transmission, even though they can't completely do it. So I think when younger children are vaccinated, it will contribute to them not becoming, not picking it up, not passing it on, and importantly, not becoming unwell. And also uh, all the issues around uh, reducing disruption to education. So reduction in transmission, but not um, not, not completely avoiding or, or eliminating that risk, but it will make a contribution. I think it's important to emphasise that. Um, Chris, can I ask you as well, but speaking to the health secretary um, earlier, I asked him what would be the trigger to implement so-called plan B? Um, and you know, there, there's not exact clarity on that at this point, is there? No, it seems quite vague. It seems to hinge on 
the performance of the NHS predictably, because there are a number of balls in the air here. As you heard in the previous report, we're also keeping a weather eye on what flu is doing and what other seasonal respiratory infections are going to throw our way. And there's a reason to be cautious here, because the restrictions that we've had in place for controlling coronavirus and the fact that people have not been travelling around the world means that we've had a historic low in the levels of influenza infection. Now, that's uh, good in the short term, because who wants the flu? But actually, it's a bit of a pain, because... In the broader picture, we are monitoring with thousands of laboratories around the world what flu is doing. And that informs what we do with the vaccine. So if we have no cases of flu to monitor, it means that our vaccine choices and our ability to predict flu's next move in the chess game is more limited. The threshold will cross. It's going to be an NHS comprehensive pressure test. And when we, when we cross a certain threshold where things are clearly not working, we have to look at how we relieve that pressure any way we can. OK, uh, yeah, so many ifs, but, ifs, buts and maybes, aren't there? Um, Kieran's got a question for you, uh, Linda. I tested positive for coronavirus last week and have been double jabbed. When I recover, will my immunity against COVID have increased? Uh, interesting question from, from Kieran. What happens with natural infection is you're exposed to a kind of wider range of viral material and viral proteins compared to the vaccines which train your body to recognize a particular part of the virus, the spike protein, and respond very effectively to that, particularly after two doses. So the two are different. Um, we know that part of the rationale for the booster program is there is some evidence of waning of immunity, uh, even mostly pl plus 20 weeks after vaccination. I don't know when Kieran had his infection. So his immune system will now, yes, be supercharged. And I think that's important for him to know. Um, and I hope he's made a full recovery. But what I would want to emphasize from a public health perspective is we've all always been saying if people had a prior infection, they should still get vaccinated because that's highly effective. And I wouldn't advocate that people go out there and try and pick up COVID, even if they've had both doses of the vaccine, just to give an even more robust immune response. But Kieran should be reassured that I'm sure the vaccines will have prevented him from becoming seriously unwell, even if he had this recent infection. Professor Linderbold, Dr Chris Smith, thank you both. You have been absolutely brilliant Pleasure. over the last nearly two years, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Um, shall we find out what's happening with the weather today? Uh, Matt, if you've just switched on, has been telling us today that it's actually... Um, the rain has improved, hasn't it, Max? It's it has. Out there. It was a miserable day across some eastern areas. Months worth of rain in 12 hours. That has gone. Daytime nice. The morning's a little bit more of an autumn feel to it at the okay. moment. We'll see that over the next few days. Very good morning, Tid. This, uh... um, and I've just been told I'm not on at nine o'clock, so this is goodbye from me oh. to you. I've, I've, we've only been together for nine months out of your 20 years, but it's been great. <laughs> I shall be watching you. Thank you so much. I'm sending you a virtual hug as well. Take care. Good luck with everything. Thank you too. You too. <laughs> she's still a news addict, even though she's leaving yeah, this programme. It's never going to go. I know. That, I know. It? It won't. So we've been hearing about the government's winter plan to tackle COVID and to stop the NHS from becoming overwhelmed today. Doctors are warning, though, that hospitals are already under pressure and summer is barely over. Breakfast John Maguire reports. Winter is coming and we're only in September. At this GP surgery in Bristol, they're preparing to administer thousands of flu jabs this weekend. It will be a season like no other, with challenges for the NHS like never before. Due to the lockdown last year, we had very little flu, so there is a sense that people's immunity might not be as widespread this year. So we definitely feel that we will be seeing more flu-related illnesses. On top of that, we will get the usual childhood respiratory viruses. Again, they've not had such a chance to circulate over the last year. And then we have COVID also. And so the three of them between them are likely to make this quite a difficult winter in terms of the respiratory scenario. The advice is to get the flu and COVID jabs when called and to wear masks, wash hands and socially distance if you suffer symptoms to limit the spread of any virus. Booster jabs for over 50s are expected to start within days. The government's hope is to avoid any return to restrictions. I think we have to learn to get on to, to live with the virus. Vaccination is, is clearly one of the ways ahead, but we shouldn't forget that there are other measures like distancing, like washing your hands, like face masks. 
Yeah, I think you've just got to carry on as normal now. It seems like people, unless it's hit them closer to home, they don't, they're, they're just sick of it now and, and they want things back to normal. Much more on our website, of course. But now I'll hand you back to Dan and Louise. Bye for now.